In today's video, we're going to learn how to do long division with remainders. Now the steps to do long division with remainders are going to be the same as the steps to do long division without remainders. And so if you want a little bit of a refresher on that, you can check out our other video um, on long division without remainders, and that should be linked in the description of this video. But let's try these two examples. So the steps for long division with remainders, as I mentioned, are the same as the steps for long division without remainders, and those are divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, and repeat. So for number one, we have 641 divided by 5. So let's rewrite this as a long division problem with a division bar. So we put our dividend, the number that is being divided, under the bar, that's 641, and our divisor, the number we're dividing by, outside, which is 5. So our first step is divide. So we have to ask ourselves, how many whole groups of 5 can fit into 6? That's going to be 1, because 1 times 5 is 5. So our next step is multiply. We just did that 1 times 5, so 1 times 5 is 5. We put that under the 6. Step 3 is subtract. We subtract 5 from 6. That gives us 1. Fourth step is bring down. We have to bring down the next digit in our dividend. That would be 4. So we bring that down here. And then step 5 is repeat. So now we go back to step 1, which is divide. So we ask how many full groups of 5 can fit into 14. That's going to be 2. We multiply. 2 times 5 is 10. Step 3 is subtract. 14 minus 10 is 4. And step 4 is bring down. So we bring down our 1. And step 5 is repeat. So now we have 5 into 41. So how many whole groups of 5 can fit into 41? That's going to be 8. 8 times 5 is 40. Step 3 is subtract. 41 minus 40 equals 1. Step 4 is bring down, but as you can see, we've gone all the way to the right in our dividend, and so we can't bring any more numbers down. So what we're left with is a 1, and that 1 is going to be our remainder. So we write that as R1. So the answer to 641 divided by 5 is 128 remainder 1. And all that means is... 5 can go into 641 128 times, and there will be 1 left over. Or said another way, 5 times 128 is 640, and 641 minus 640 is 1. So there's 1 left over when you multiply 5 times 128 to get to 641. Let's try number 2. We have 860 divided by 6. So let's rewrite that as a long division problem. So we have our long division bar, 860 under the bar, and 6 outside. So we can start with step 1, which is divide. So how many whole groups of 6 can go into 8? That would be 1. Step 2 is going to be multiply. 1 times 6 is 6. Step 3 is subtract. So we have 8 minus 6. That's going to give us 2. Step 4 is bring down. We bring down our 6. So now that's 26. And then step 5 is repeat. So now how many whole groups of 6 fit into 26? That will be 4. And then multiply. 4 times 6 is 24. Step 3 is subtract. 26 minus 24 is 2. And step 4, bring down. Bring our 0 down, that becomes 20, and then step 5 is repeat. So how many whole groups of 6 go into 20? That's going to be 3, and we multiply. 3 times 6 is 18. Step 3, subtract. 20 minus 18 is 2. And then our next step would be bring down, but again, we have gone all the way to the right in our dividend, and there's no more digits, so we can't bring anything else down. So 2 is going to be our remainder. So we write that R2. 
So 860 divided by 6 equals 143, remainder 2. And again, that just means that 6 goes into 860 143 times, and there's 2 left over at the end, because 143 times 6 equals 858, and 860 minus 858 is 2. So in our first two examples, um, our divisor, or the number we were dividing by, was a single digit number. But sometimes you're going to have a divisor that's two digits, um, and you have to know how to handle those as well. So here we have two examples like that. So let's try number three. We have 410 divided by 20. So again, let's rewrite this as a long division problem. So we have our division bar, put 410, our dividend under the bar and 20, our divisor, outside the bar. So now we go through step one, which is divide. So we ask ourselves, how many times, or how many whole groups of 20 fit into four? Well, that's gonna be none, because four is smaller than 20. So we have to move over one digit to the right in our dividend and use them both. So we have four and one, so 41. So we ask ourselves, how many whole groups of 20 fit into 41? Well, that's gonna be two. And since we used both digits, we put the 2 over the 1. Now step 2 is multiply. 2 times 20 equals 40. We wrote the 40 down here. Step 3 is subtract. 41 minus 40 equals 1. Step 4 is bring down. We bring down our 0. Make this 10. And then step 5 is repeat. So now we divide. We say how many whole groups of 20 go into 10. And since 10 is less than 20, that's going to be 0. So we write the 0 up here, and step, step 2 is multiply. 0 times 20 is 0. Step 3 is subtract. 10 minus 0 is 10. And step 4 is bring down, but we've gone all the way to the right in our dividends, so there's nothing else to bring down, so we're done. And since we have a 10 left over, our remainder is going to be 10. So the answer to 410 divided by 20 is 20 remainder 10. Let's try number 4. We have 1,035 divided by 11. So again, we can rewrite this as a long division problem. Put our division bar. 1,035 goes under the bar. 11 goes outside. So let's start with step one, divide. So we ask, how many whole groups of 11 go into one? Again, one is smaller than 11 here, so we have to move over one digit to 10. So we say, how many whole groups of 11 go into 10? Now in this problem, it still isn't big enough to uh, allow us to divide, so we have to move over one more digit to the three and ask, how many whole groups of 11 go into 103? Now, some of you might know this off the top of your head, but if you don't, um, we can kind of estimate and use some easy numbers multiplied by 11 to kind of figure out and narrow it down. So the number I usually like to start with is 10, because to multiply any number by 10, you just add a zero. So 11 times 10 is 110. So that's a little too big. Um, so let's drop it back down, maybe one lower. So 11 times nine, that's gonna be 99. So if 10 is too big and 9, 9 works, then 9 whole groups of 11 fit into 103. So we can write the 9, and remember it goes over the 3 since we're using that. Step 2 is going to be multiply. 9 times 11, we just said it was 99. Step 3 is subtract. So 103 minus 99 is going to give us 4. Step 4 is bring down. We bring down our 5. And step five is repeat. So now we go back to divide. How many whole groups of 11 fit into 45? That's going to be four. Four times 11 is 44. Step three is subtract. 45 minus 44 is equal to one. And step four would be bring down, but again, we've gone all the way to the right in our dividend. And so there's nothing left to bring down, so we are done. So since we are left with a 1, that becomes our remainder, so remainder 1. So 1,035 divided by 11 equals 94, remainder 1. 
So for these last two examples, if you're feeling confident and want to try them on your own, you can feel free to pause the video here and then follow along with me as I go through the solution later. And if you just want to follow along with me the first time, that's okay as well. So for number five, we have 525 divided by 10. So let's rewrite this as a long division problem. Put our division bar here. We have 525 under the bar and 10 on the outside. So step one, again, is divide. So we ask ourselves how many times, how many whole groups of 10 go into five? Well, five smaller than 10, so none. So we can move over to the two and ask how many whole groups of 10 go into 52? Well, that's gonna be five, so we write the five up here. Then we multiply step two, so five times 10, that's 50. Step three is subtract, 52 minus 50. It's gonna equal two. Step four is bring down, so we bring down our five. Now we repeat, so we ask how many whole groups of 10 fit into 25? It's going to be two. Step two is multiply, two times 10 is 20. Put that down here. Step three is subtract. 25 minus 20 equals five. Step four would be bring down, but again, we've gone all the way to the right in our dividend. There's nothing left to bring down. So since we are left with five, that becomes our remainder. We write R five. And then the answer to 525 divided by 10 is 52 remainder five. Let's try number six. We have 4,822 divided by three. And this is why long division is great because it allows us to do division problems with big numbers like 4,822 that without a calculator that aren't easily intuitive in our head. So we have, let's rewrite this as a long division problem. So we have 4,000, put our bar, we have 4,822 under the bar, and three outside. So let's start off with number, step one, divide. How many whole groups of three go into four? That's going to be one. Step two is multiply, one times three. That's three. Step three is subtract. Four minus three is one. Step four is bring down, we bring down the eight, that's 18. Step five is repeat. So we go back to step one, divide. How many whole groups of three go into 18? That's gonna be six. Step two is multiply. Six times three is 18. So we write that there. Step three is subtract. 18 minus 18 is zero. Step four is bring down, bring down our two. Step five is repeat. So we divide again. How many whole groups of three go into two? That's gonna be zero, because two is smaller than three. Zero times three is zero. So three is subtract. Two minus zero is two. Step four is bring down. Bring down the other two there. So five is repeat. All right. So we divide one more time. How many whole groups of three go into 22 now? going to be 7. 7 times 3 is 21. Step 3 is subtract. Let's write this over here. We're going to just bring this up. 22 minus 21 is 1. And step 4 would be bring down, but again, we've gone all the way to the right in our dividend. Um, there's nothing left to bring down, and so whatever we're left with becomes our remainder. So we write R1. So 4,822 divided by 3 is 1,607, remainder one. Hopefully after watching this video, you have a better understanding of how to do long division with remainders. Thanks for watching.